Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to take a look at the vignette panel that's found in the develop module of On One Photo Raw 2018. Now, usually you'd like to add a vignette to your image for one of two reasons. The first reason is you'd like to obscure or diminish something that's in the background or something towards the edge of the frame. The other reason you might want to add a vignette is that it helps draw the viewer's attention towards the middle of the frame, which is usually where your subject will be placed. Now in the case of this image of the chickadee, it's right smack dab in the middle. Now there is nice bokeh around the chickadee, but I'd still like to add a vignette to help kind of focus the viewer's attention on the chickadee and not let their eyes stray too much to the outside of the frame. Now for this image to begin with, I did some basic tone and color adjustments. I added some sharpening. And as far as lens corrections, the On One database does not have my lens in it. I did a video on the lens correction panel and in it I mentioned what you could do if your lens is not included in the database. So I will ask you to refer to that video for more information on what you can do if your lens is not included in on one's database. For this video, the image looks fine and I'm not really worried about doing any lens correction, so I'm going to let it go. So I'd like to add a vignette to the image. So I'm going to click on show more and then click on vignette. Now, as is the typical layout of these panels, across the top are some styles, more or less presets, that you could quickly add to your image. And let's go through those very quickly. The first one is subtle, and you can see it just subtly darkened the edges of the frame. The next one is strong. The next one is big softy. That's a relatively strong vignette that is feathered more. The other one is called edges, and you can see it's very rectangular. Then to the right of edges, there's a drop down, and that will include several more uh, preset styles. And if you just hover over them with your mouse cursor, you'll get a preview of each of those styles on your image. So the first one is Big Softy, which we already looked at. The next is Black Edges. The next is Burnout. The next is Center Spot. The next is Center Spot Bright. The next is Dark Edges. The next is Edges, which we already looked at. The next is Lighten Edges. The next is Strong, which we already looked at. Subtle, which we already looked at white edges, white vignette, and that's the last one. So you could come in here and hopefully find a preset that works for you. But if you don't, you could actually just easily dial in a vignette that will fit your image to your liking. Now to demonstrate that, I'm going to reset this panel so all the sliders are at their default position. Now the first slider, brightness, would you like a white or a light vignette or a black? dark vignette. If you'd like a white or light vignette, move it to the right. If you would like a darker vignette, move it to the left. As simple as that. And the further you move it, the more intense that vignette will be. So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to leave it on white just because you could see it better, not because I think it fits this image best. But that way you could see the other sliders and what they do. The next is size. Now if I move it to the right, I'll start to diminish the vignette. I'm pulling it more towards the edges. If I move it to the left, I'm making the vignette stronger as far as its size. I'm pushing it more towards the middle. That's pretty obvious. I'll reset that. The next is feather. If I move it to the right, I am feathering the vignette more. And if I move it to the left, you'll see I'll have no feather at all if I'm on zero. So it's a real abrupt change. And I'm going to leave it at that because that will help demonstrate the next two functions a little easier. Roundness. If I move it to the right, I am going to make the vignette more round. If I move it to the left, I'll make it more rectangular. And if I keep moving it to the left, it will disappear altogether. So if you lose your vignette, just uh, keep in mind that you may have moved roundness all the way to minus 100. 
So we'll leave that like that. Just for the next demonstration is this drop-down. The drop-down is the type of vignette. By default, it shows normal, and normal will be the strongest vignette. The other two choices are subtle and soft. With subtle, you could see that it's kind of a little more, uh, ha or has some opacity to it, so it's not as strong as normal. And soft is kind of in the middle. So normal is the strongest, followed by soft, with subtle being the lightest. So you could really kind of dial in the exact type of vignette you want. Now the very last thing to look at on this panel is this little icon right here with the dot in the middle and kind of score, uh, four square edges. That will allow you to center your vignette. This comes in very handy if your subject isn't smack dab in the middle and you'd like the center of the vignette to be over your subject, not over the middle of the frame. If your subject's over here and you had a really heavily feathered vignette, it would start feathering onto your subject. So we could center it. Just click on it and you'll see the tool becomes active and your cursor turns into a plus sign. Now you can just click anywhere on the image and that will be the center of your vignette. And to demonstrate, I'll click way up to the top so you can see way up here. And you can see that we centered the vignette way up there. Now you could just do this repeatedly. Just click on the tool every time you want to do it again and just click somewhere else. So that way you could center the vignette. You don't have to just do it in the vertical area either. You could do it off to the side and in the corner, let's say. So you could center the vignette pretty much anywhere on your frame. Now I want to put a vignette on this image the proper way. So I'm going to uh, reset uh, the vignette uh, panel. And then I'm going to put a darker vignette. I generally favor darker vignettes on my images. So I'm going to put right around there looks good. And of course this is all down to you know subjective taste. I think the size right at its default position of 50 looked pretty good there. Uh, let's see. Feathering I think is fine right at where it was. And I actually going to like roundness too. So there's really not too much. I'm going to keep the normal vignette. But what I am going to do is I want the log or this chunk of wood that the chickadee is standing on uh, to be more noticeable. And I'd like this blank space above the chickadee's head to be a little less noticeable. So I'm going to center the vignette lower on the chickadee's chest. I'm going to center the vignette right there. So it has more of the vignette appearing above the chickadee and less below the chickadee. So that's what I'm going with on this. So there is before and there's after. Before, after. Now after doing that, I think it might be a little bit too heavy. So I'm going to bring it back a little bit and maybe I'll feather it a little more like that. So there's before, after. I prefer subtle, almost not noticeable vignettes. It's just my personal preference. There are exceptions. There's sometimes I'll put on a white vignette and I'll make it heavier and more noticeable. But in this case, I prefer it to be a little more subtle. So something like that. So that's it. Everything you need to know on the vignette. So we've done it. We've done all the different panels that are in the develop module of On One Photo Raw 2018. In our next video, we're going to start talking about the tools that are found in the develop module of On One Photo Raw 2018. And those include the crop tool, these two brush tools, the adjustment brush and the adjustable gradient. Below that, we're going to look at the perfect eraser, then the retouch brush, and then the clone stamp tool. So we'll take a look at all these tools. And we're going to begin with the crop tool in our next video. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.